Hi to all viewers. Welcome to TSAT Vidya Live Interactive Lesson organized by Telangana SCRT. Children, today we are going to know a topic from 9th class biology, English medium. Children, look at this video. What the dog is doing? Yes, it is salivating. Why do you think it is salivating? Children, whenever you see food, you salivate. Now, let me see whether this dog is salivating because seeing its food. Yes, it is. Now, let this watch this figure. What it is? It is a beautiful red rose. Now, children, when you go by the side of a dump yard, what you will do? You will close your nose. Why do you think you close your nose? Because uh, dump yard will emit bad smell. So, he is helping us to receive all these changes from the surroundings. Now, let us uh, see this picture. What is this person doing? He is pressing a sir. Unexpectedly, if he touches that hot iron plate, what he will do? He will remove his fan uh, immediately from that hot plate. Now, how did he receive this change? This is uh, because of uh, the sense organs. We receive and respond to the changes which are happening in our uh, surroundings. So, who are the organs here? These are the sensory organs. With the help of them, we are going to receive and respond to the changes. Now, we have different sensory organs in our uh, body. Let me see about them. First, first one is uh, eye. What the eye will do? I will help us to see which is happening in our surroundings. So, it is a visual sensory organ. Next, uh, we have ear. What this ear will do? Ear will help us to hear what is happening in our surroundings. So, it is a, an auditory sensory organ. Next, we have nose. What the nose will do? Nose will uh, help us to smell. Now, only we have seen an uh, example where we have closed our uh, eye and nose uh, when we move by a dump yard. So, it is an olfactory sensory organ. Next, uh, tongue. What is the help of uh, tongue here? The tongue, it will help us to sense the taste, different tastes we have. So, these tastes are being uh, uh, tasted with the help of the tongue. So, it is a gustatory sensory organ. Next, we have skin. When you come for the skin here, skin helps us to feel the touch, not only touch, it also helps us to feel the pain, pressure and also the difference in the temperature and that is hotness or coldness. So, altogether, the skin is tactile sensory organ. So, children, what are the different sensory organs we have in our body? Eye, ear, nose, tongue and skin. So, these all sensory organs will help us to receive the changes. So, these changes which happens in our surroundings are an agent which is responsible to create a physiological response in our body is called stimulus. Just a sensory organ is not sufficient to get the change from the surroundings. We need a different organs to get involved in this Pathway. So, let me see with an example how the stimulus is uh, received by our body and we do respond. So, now this is uh, a person holding a hot pan uh, with a hot handle unexpectedly unknowingly he had touched that hot handle. So, that is the stimulus and this hotness is received by the receptors which is present in the skin of the hand. So, these receptors will generate sensory impulse and send this sensory impulse to the sensory nerve. Now, this sensory nerve will send the information to the central nervous system. Here, in the central nervous system, we have a brain and a spinal cord. When you come for this brain here, if the stimulus is not dangerous, not harmful, then the brain will execute this pathway. If the stimulus is dangerous in this example, whatever we have taken, here the spinal cord will execute this pathway. It will analyze what had happened and generate the motor impulse. And this whatever the motor impulse which has been generated is sent to the motor nerve. Now, this motor nerve will send the information to the 
muscles here in the hand which are called motor organs or effector organs. The muscles in this uh, hand will contract uh, and uh, release the handle, hot handle here and uh, due to which uh, we can escape from that uh, dangerous stimuli. So, this releasing the hand by the muscles contraction is called as a response. So, here the stimulus was a hotness and that hotness was been uh, we have uh, get rid of by our response. This is how the pathway leads stimulus to re response pathway. Let me see how it goes. So, first the changes are being received by the sensory organ. Sensory organ will generate the sensory impulse and the sensory impulse is sent to sensory nerve. Sensory nerve will take the information to the central nervous system. Central nervous system will analyze what is happening and it will generate the motor impulse which is given to motor nerve and the motor nerve will carry the impulse to the motor organ or the effector organ where the response is executed. Now children, does every stimulus leads to response generation? No. Some stimulus will lead to response generation whereas some will not lead to the response generation here. Now, it needs some level of response, some stimulation, some threshold stimulus is needed to respond here. For example, if you take tea, if we are offered with two types of items, sweets and salty snacks, this happens normally in our houses. Now, when you take sweets, before you take the sip of tea or in between the sips of tea, uh, how do you feel children? You feel uh, less sweet or else the tea does not taste sweet. This is because when you eat sweet, it has a more concentration of sweetness. So, this is uh, received by the receptors. Whereas, uh, after you take the sweet and immediately if you take uh, tea here, it looks less sweet or else we do not find any sweet. Why? Because here the more concentrated sensation is received by the receptor. So, if it is in continuation, then the less concentrated uh, sensation is not uh, received. So, because of that, uh, the sweets does not go with the tea, then only the salty snacks will uh, go with the tea. That is why if you eat the sweets also, before taking the sipping of the tea, you are going to take the salty snacks. Now, children, do we feel the sensation of dress when we wear it? Yes, we feel the sensation. Now, the same question I want to ask here, just with a little twist here. Do we feel the continuous sensation of dress on us? No. When we wear it, we have the sensation, but this dress uh, is present on our, uh, on our body continuously. We does not uh, feel that sensation continuous. This phenomenon is called as uh, adaptation. Adaptation is a phenomenon in which if a stimulus is continuous, Receptors cannot sense the continuation and duration of the stimulus touching the skin. Okay, children, today we are going to see in detail about visually sensory organ eye. We have pair of eyes present in the skull, in the eye sockets. See here, this is the eye socket, Nana. And in this eye sockets, the eyes are eyeball these are the white color shaped are the eyeballs here now whatever the eye which we see is just uh, only one sixth part only this one sixth part is visible to us whereas uh, the rest of the five by sixth part is present inside the skull we, uh, we are not able to view this part only this part of the eyeball is visible to us now if you see the protection of eye eye is very uh, important organ for us. So, it has to be protected. Already we have seen that eye is present inside the skull. So, skull will protect uh, along with the skull here the eyebrows which are present above the eyes, the eyelids which cover the eyes, the eyelashes which are present on the eyelids and the tears which are produced by the lacrimal glands. Uh, they will protect the eye. They will not allow the dust particle to enter into the eye. If any dust particle enters into the eye also, the lacrimal glands will produce the tears. Now, let me see the lacrimal glands here. So, this is the lacrimal gland, Nana, this one the blue color and these are the ducts, lacrimal ducts. These lacrimal ducts will release the tears which will bathe this eye part, the upper surface of the eye and through this portion, the tears will come out of the eye. 
children i think you may have seen uh, while we cry or else if the tears uh, comes out of our eyes uh, our nose discharge also starts yes ma did you ever experience it yes this is because uh, the tears which has been produced uh, they travel through lacrimal canals here and enters into lacrimal lacrimal sac and from this lacrimal sac through the naso lacrimal duct uh, it enters uh, into the nasal cavity so that's why along with the tears uh, here we nasal discharge takes place in our nose okay children now next uh, let we see the anatomy of a uh, eye if you go for the anatomy of eye we can divide the eye into two segments one is a uh, anterior segment this part whereas uh, this is the posterior uh, segment anterior segment consists of uh, cornea iris lens this one is the lens here and this one is the iris this uh, part which is present in front of the lens the empty space is the pupil this area which is present in between the cornea and the eye lens this one is uh, the aqueous chamber filled with aqueous humor and this red color here this uh, red color part here this one and also white color threads here these are all uh, ciliary body and suspensory ligaments this part comes under the posterior segment where we can find the biggest chamber which is called vitreous chamber filled with the vitreous uh, humor which is a uh, jelly in uh, nature aqueous humor is a uh, uh, liquid type whereas vitreous humor uh, humor is a uh, it is a jelly like when you come for the eye eye mainly has a uh, three layers the first one is a uh, sclera so here i have shown with blue color but usually it is a uh, white in color it is uh, made up of a dense connective tissue fibrous hard and tough it protects the inner parts of the eye and in front region that is an anterior segment of the eye the sclera forms a cornea this cornea here i have uh, shown it with white why because it is transparent it doesn't uh, have any white color it will allow the light into the eye the next layer the red one here i have shown this is a choroid layer usually the choroid is a uh, dark brown to blackish in nature and it is highly supplied with uh, blood vessels and in the anterior region the choroid uh, forms uh, ciliary muscles this one the suspensory ligaments and also the iris part and this uh, ciliary ligaments or the uh, ciliary uh, sorry uh, suspensory ligaments or the ciliary muscles will uh, control the movement of eye lens to accommodate the light into the eye the next one is uh, the retina this is the real part the yellow one which you have shown here this is the real sensitive part of the eye where uh, it consists of uh, the rods and cones the photoreceptors now these rods or cones are named after the shape if you see this uh, rods are rod shaped here the green the dark green one whereas the here if you see the light green they are cone shapes that's why they are named as a uh, cones if you come for the rods uh, rods have pigment called rhodopsin rhodopsin is very important in receiving the different shades of gray color in the night children i think you may have uh, noticed uh, whenever you enter into the dark room you find it completely darkness for some time you can't see anything just a complete blindness is there in front of us but after some time uh, then you feel uh, that you can identify some things which are present in front of you if a person moves in front of you you can identify if an image is moving uh, in front of you but you can't identify who is that person this is because of uh, the rhodopsin the uh, pigment which is present in the rods next we have uh, cones in the cones we have the pigment called uh, iodopsin and this iodopsin will help in uh, recognizing the different colors now whatever the colorful world we are viewing is because of this uh, iodopsin pigment which is present in the cones they will uh, Uh, identify the primary colors blue green and red and by the combination of these colors we can sense the different shades or different colors of uh, the world okay next uh, if you see here this one the spot here we have shown is a uh, fovea centralis this is very important part which is uh, present in the retina it consists of a uh, plenty number of cones and uh, the whatever the light comes here the image completely focused on to this fovea centralis if it focuses on the fovea centralis then we can have the vision very accurately and uh, when you come for this one this is called blind spot 
the area where the optic nerve originates. In this blind spot, uh, we don't find any photoreceptor. So, if the light falls on this blind spot, uh, we don't have any vision. Next, we have a conjectiva. If you see the conjectiva here, this one, the whatever the orange, light, dark orange color I have shown here, this is the conjectiva, which is a thin transparent membrane, which covers the sclera and also the inner lining of the eyelid. It does not cover the cornea. Please observe this here. Conjectiva never covers the cornea. Only it covers the sclera and the conjectiva and uh, it will help with moisturization of the eye. Next we have here, this is the eye model. Let me observe the eye model children. This one, these glands or lacrimal glands. These are the ducts, whatever we have seen here, these are the lacrimal ducts and they will secrete the tears when the dust falls in the eyes. This is the eyeball where the glands, tears will bathe this and come through out this area. This is a nasolacrimal duct where the uh, discharge also goes into nasal area. This whatever the part we are seeing, this is the muscles of eyelid. Now behind it we can uh, see here the outer layer, the white color one. This is the sclera, which is very hard and tough, which will uh, protect the inner layers of the eye. And it mainly has uh, different uh, muscles, uh, which will help in the convergence of the eyeballs here, in the movement of eyeballs here. There are four straight muscles. This is upper superior rectus muscle, inferior rectus muscle. This is a medial lateral muscles. This is present near the nasolacrimal duct here whereas uh, this one is a uh, lateral rectus uh, muscle. Along with this four, we also have uh, two oblique muscles. This one, the above one, this is a uh, superior oblique and uh, in the same way, we have at the bottom inferior oblique muscles which will help the eyeball to move. Now, this one is the second layer, choroid layer which is a uh, dark brownish to black color. Now, this inner one, the light pink color here, this is the retina. And if you see the spot here, a small spot here, this one, the dark pink color, this area, this is the fovea centralis, where plenty number of cones are present. This is the optic nerve. And uh, at the origin of this optic nerve, uh, we do not have any photoreceptors. So this is called as a blind spot, where the vision is uh, nothing. Next, when you come for this, the dark pink color, this is the part of a choroid layer. It is the ciliary muscle, ciliary lamellae here we can find the line structures. We can also find from the this side also the white line which is present here. This is also the ciliary body here and this is a iris which acts like diaphragm. And this black part or a hole is there, it is the pupil, it is black because no light is reflected, complete light enters into the eye. Now if you see this, the transparent dome shaped structure. This is called as a cornea and this is a by convex, sorry, uh, okay, by convex lens here. This is a cornea. The area in between uh, this cornea and by convex lens is called aqueous, chamber filled with aqueous humor. And if you see this uh, lens here, this is controlled. The movement of this lens is controlled by the ciliary muscles and also suspensory ligaments. And if you come for this, the big plastic ball here you have been seen, this is the vitreous chamber filled with the vitreous humor, which is a jelly like it uh, helps to absorb the shocks, physical shock absorber it is an. Uh, so that's a, let me see a preserved cow eye dissection. Now this is the eye separated, this is preserved eye. Now, I am taking a scissor and trying to cut open, see how hard it is. It is getting impossible for me to cut open. Then I took the scalpel, with the help of scalpel here, I am trying to make a small hole carefully. Do not allow the material to spill out. Slowly make a small hole with the help of the sharp edge of the scalpel. Slowly cut it open make a small hole. Once the small hole is formed, little bit pierce and then take the help of scissors and cut open. 
don't cut open the complete eye rotate the eye and slowly cut open now if you see here some liquid is falling from the eye that is uh, aqueous humor it is a liquid aqueous humor has fallen down now slowly open it open the eyeball okay this is the inner part this whatever which is shaking here this is uh, the vitreous humor see how jelly it is here this is uh, where we can find the retina now let we see here how physical shock absorber it is here now i have cut open everything then uh, let me remove the vitreous humor such that we can see the different parts which are present in the anterior segment of the eye slowly see how it is so slowly i am removing the jelly part which is very transparent the majority of the eye is filled with this humor vitreous humor now this is the anterior part we can find this whatever the cream color this is the eye lens biconvex eye lens slowly i will try to remove the eye lens out the eye lens are connected with the suspensory ligaments and also ciliary muscles so very carefully we have to cut with the help of the scalpel if not uh, the ciliary muscles will get uh, damaged so so white color area we can see be below it here this one this one below it so i have cut open now the suspensory ligaments also yes now i have separated the eye lens the eye lens is crystalline it should be transparent but children do you find the transparency here here you are finding the cloudiness it is because uh, it is a preserved uh, eye and if you see the eye it is not a crystal it is crystalline but it can sh change the shape here see here if you press sl slightly you can change the shape so with the help of the ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments the shape of the eye lens can be change now if you see this the black part this one this is the ciliary muscles so now let me remove the ciliary muscles also to completely see the have the complete view of it slowly we have to remove the ciliary muscles in complete intact be very careful in removing it slowly separate the ciliary muscles from the cornea rotate the cut out part now once if you get out then slowly we can peel it off yes i have gone through now slowly i am peeling off be very careful in peeling off you should get the ciliary muscles intact yes thus i have removed the ciliary muscle this is the ciliary muscles this one okay and if you see this said you can find this white line as we have seen in the eye model also this is the iris the diaphragm and this the center part which where we have an empty space is the pupil so what the pupil will do whenever very less light is there the pupil will increase the size and whenever the light is less the pupil will increase and when high intensity light is thrown it will come down now if you see this part this is a retina so let me peel off the retina also where we find all the photoreceptors be careful in peeling off the retina so that is the retina layer which is coming out very sensitive area photoreceptor area now at uh, one place uh, this retina is uh, having contact here with the optic nerve here this area 
So, this is how the retina where the photoreceptors are accumulated. Now, if you see this, uh, I am removing the complete retina with the help of scalpel, there uh, I am separating the optic nerve with the retina. Yes, this is uh, optic nerve here. Now, if you see this uh, area which is reflective, this we find in different mammals, but in man we do not find this reflective area in our eye. Next children, let me see the uh, function of eye, how the light enters into the eye. The light enters uh, through cornea, it passes through aqueous chamber and here this is iris. Now, already I said this acts as diaphragm, whenever less light is there, it will increase the size and whenever uh, high intensity light passes here, this is the direct light coming from the torch light, so it is a high light, so automatically the pupil size will decrease. And here what were the ciliary muscles and also the suspendary ligaments, what they will do? They will change the shape and also position of the eye lens such that whatever the light which is coming into the eye get uh, focuses. Now, let me see how the suspendary and uh, ciliary muscles uh, change the shape and also the position of the lens. Now, when the ciliary muscles contract, whatever this lens is there, it becomes uh, elongated during relaxation. It was little bit round during contraction. During relaxation, it becomes a little bit concave, uh, sorry, little bit oval in shape here. Now, watch this video children how the light reaches uh, fovea in how many steps easily it will be understood by us. Now, this is the object here. The first step is uh, convergence where uh, the two eyes converge onto this image here with the help of uh, the different muscles which are present associated with the sclera. So, now this is a uh, fovea where the light is allowed to fall on the fovea here. The, and if it does not get converged properly, you are going to see two images which is called diplopia. And once the light enters into the eye here at the pupil, basing on the amount of light enters, pupillary constriction takes place here. So, here uh, as the pupillary constriction takes place, uh, the accurate amount of uh, light enters into the eye and uh, to make the light to fall on the proper fovea region, here the ciliary muscles and also the suspendary ligaments here, which are in a contractive state. Now, this suspensory ligament and ciliary body or ciliary muscle, they will relax because of that see here what is happening, it is changing the shape here and due to which uh, the light has clearly focused on the fovea region. So, here the three steps, first one is a convergence, second one is a papillary constriction and third one is a relaxation of the ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments. Next, uh, if you see this region, this is the fovea region where uh, you find uh, rods and cones. So, this is the cone basing on the shape here, cone shape and these are the rods. Now, the light falls on this rods and cones, uh, they will receive the light here and uh, at this uh, area, they will generate uh, sensory impulse here in this area. Sensory impulse is being generated and they will pass on this sensory impulse to this uh, bipolar neuron. So, this one, the pink one, the ash one, here the yellow or orange I have shown, these are all the bipolar neurons and these bipolar neurons are in contact with uh, sensory neurons uh, which will uh, go along with the optic nerve. So, see here, these are the two eyes. So, from this optic nerve, these two optic nerves, right optic and also left optic, they come to the brain here and uh, the brain area will uh, analyze what is the vision, what we are watching here. Now, let me see in this video, this is a preserved goat eyes in intact with brain. These are two eyes, Nana. So, this is a the left one and that is the right eye. So, this is the eyeball here and uh, the outer mass is uh, nothing but uh, areolar and adipose tissue. Now, if you see this, uh, this is the brain here, 
this is uh, whatever the optic now coming out from this eye in the similar way. If you see from the bottom, this is the ventral side now we are going to watch, this is ventral side. So, here this is eyeball, here from here, here in the in between in, inside it we have eyeball and here this is the eye optic now coming and here we have a optic chiasma exchange of a fibers. This is optic chiasma. Now, if you see the eye, eye will act as a same like camera. Now, if you see here R is the object, the light from the object passes to the cornea, aqueous chamber, pupil and falls on the lens and the lens will adjust themselves with the help of ciliary muscles and uh, ligaments and it will make the image or focal point to fall on the retina that is in the fovea region. Now, if you see here, this is what we call the visual area, the area where the part in front of our eyes whatever we see visual area, this is object R. Now, this blue color whatever which I shown here, it is a right visual field, right side, right I can view it, whereas this one is a left visual field. We can also divide the visual field vertically also, this upper one is called superior visual field and the lower one is called inferior visual field. Now, this one whatever the yellow color I have elevated children, this yellow color elevated area is called binocular visual field because that both eyes, this uh, right eye and also the left eye can focus on this area from all fields, visual field, superior right side and left side, inferior right side and also left side, this area we can call it as a binocular visual field where we can focus. Now, at this, this at this center, which covers all this four at this center, now this part will get focused on the foveal region, where the vision of the eye is continuous. Now, see ya, so through whatever the nerve endings coming out from the retina, from the right and left, this is uh, the ventral view, that is why now we find the this as right eye and this as a left eye here. So, the nerve endings are coming through the optic now here and reaching the brain and at this area the fibers are get exchanged, some fibers which are coming from this area and also which are coming from this area they get exchanged. This part where the fibers get exchanged here is called optic chiasmata. Now, I think children you have seen the object this uh, image here, it is uh, inverted, yes or no children? The upside down, down is seen up and up is seen down and not only that here, lateral inversion we can find here, in that is the right is seen as left and left is seen as a right, where uh, the image which is fallen on the retina, but do you find that image? No, we see different image, that is because uh, here the whatever the nerve fibers are there, they are getting exchanged here due to which uh, our brain will analyze uh, the proper image. That is the reason why we can view without uh, lateral inversion and also without uh, vertical inversion of the image. Next here, see here, now here the after optic asthmata, the fibers will uh, reach the midbrain here and the midbrain will analyze from the midbrain again it sends to this area which we call as lateral geniculi, uh, lateral geniculi nucleus here, this belongs to cerebellum and from here from the midbrain or also from this lateral geniculus uh, nucleus, uh, the message is sent to the visual cortex region also here, visual cortex uh, region, this one. Okay, so, automatically the midbrain the lateral geniculi nucleus and also visual cortex will analyze the image and we can have the proper vision. Now, children, let me see about the eye diseases. When you come for the eye diseases here, uh, they may be because of uh, some metabolic activities uh, may lead to the formation of uh, uh, this eye disease or else uh, some defects 
Okay, let me see in detail about uh, one after the other. First one is uh, nutritional blindness. This is the major blindness uh, what the children in our India are uh, facing here. This is uh, because of uh, the nutritional lacking, especially vitamin A deficiency in the children. That is leading to this uh, nutritional blindness, which is a permanent blindness. In this blindness, uh, whatever the cornea which is uh, present in front of the eye, that gets very thin and get burst out. So, for that, uh, that is the reason why our government uh, for every six months will supply the vitamin A supplement for the children in the schools. Next is a color blindness. Now, this is because of uh, deficiency of uh, uh, iodopsin in the cones. The, ch the children cannot identify the primary colors perfectly. That is the blue, green and uh, red color. See in this picture here you can find uh, 9 and 7. But some, the people who have color blindness uh, cannot identify this uh, 97 or else in this picture you can find uh, at the rate. This also cannot be identified by the child. Now next uh, we have uh, night blindness. Now during the daytime, they will have a normal vision, but when they come to the dullness, uh, where the light is very dim, there the rods cannot uh, find out uh, properly the different shades of the gray due to which uh, they become blind during the uh, night. Next is xerophthalmia. We call it as dry eyes, and uh, because of this, uh, the uh, lubrication is uh, not there in the eye due to which uh, the friction develops in the eye, leading to dryness. Next is uh, glaucoma. This is usually present in uh, the people who are uh, diabetic. In this uh, case, uh, the optic nerves gets blocked, destroyed due to which a plenty amount of liquids will accumulate in front portion of the eye. So this is the front portion of the eye where the uh, fluid is accumulated due to which uh, the, uh, the vision is completely lost by the people. Next one is a cataract here. Here light lace you can find the blurish uh, white colored shaded region here this is a cataract which has been formed it may be formed in uh, one eye or else both eye and here this can be operated this can be removed by operation next uh, this is what we call myopia or uh, short sightedness in this uh, if you see here short uh, the image is uh, formed this is the focal point this is the image where is formed the image is formed in front of the retina due to which uh, the vision becomes blur. They can see the near places very properly, but when you go far, they can't see. They have only the near vision. That's why it is uh, called a short sightedness. So to rectify this, uh, we can use a biconvex uh, lens, sorry, biconcave lens here. This is the biconcave lens due to which uh, whatever the focal point which was in front of the retina, that has been made to fall on the retina. So due to which uh, we can rectify this uh, problem. Next, we have a hypermetropia. It is also called as a hyperopia or a long sightedness. Children, you may have heard that uh, old uh, people, that is our grandmothers and grandfathers, they can see the far things very clear, but uh, they can't see which are uh, near to them. So, this is because uh, the focal point is uh, formed beyond the retina here. Uh, so, now to rectify this, we can use a uh, biconvex lens here, this one, through which uh, the rays passes and gets the focal point exactly on the retina. So this is how we can uh, rectify the hypermetropia. Now eye illusion, see this now. You find as if uh, it is moving. Can you see anything in the center? Suddenly, if you see, you can see something, some numbers or else if you do not concentrate, you cannot find. And you find all these uh, rays are coming out from there. This is illusion. Next, if you see these uh, dots also. If you see, concentrate on these white dark circles, you find gray circles in between. Really, gray circles are not there in this area, but we find the gray circles. This is all because of illusion. Illusion is an uh, instance of a wrong or uh, misinterpreted perception of a sensory experience. Children, what we have learned today? We have seen the changes which are perceived and physiologically responded are called stimulus. Now, when you come for the stimulus, it includes uh, the pathway consisting of five components. Now, these five components are the sense organs which receive the stimuli and generate sensory impulses and send to sensory nerves where they take to the central nervous system where they are got analyzed and motor impulses are being generated. And these motor impulses are sent to motor nerves and motor nerves will take to the motor organs where uh, we show the response to the stimuli. Next, uh, we have different sensory organs, but uh, 
they will not only receive five sensory organs, will receive not only five senses, but also they receive more than five senses. Now, the best example we can take the skin, not only the touch, it also feels the pain, pressure, hotness. And also, if you come for the eyes, we think that only the dark, the dark shades and the colors are being received, but not only that here, uh, different uh, uh, new receptors has been found in the eye where uh, they can find the shade, shadows, the margins and the movement of the uh, images also. Now, if you come here, uh, now sense organs not only sense, but also they help us to learn, remember and escape from the similar dangerous uh, stimuli. For example, if a sheep goes to a plant uh, which it seeks its uh, latex for the first time, it does not know, so that is why it went for the first time, there it uh, experienced the latex uh, which is very sticky in nature uh, or else it causes irritation to it. So, next time it avoids going to that type of a uh, plant species. So, this is how the sense organs will help us to learn and escape from the dangerous uh, stimuli. Now, when you come for the eye, already we have known now, it is a visually sensory organ. So, through this uh, eye, we perceive more than 80 percent of the information is memorized when you compare to the other sensory organs. Next, when you come for the eye, eye is located in the skull, uh, in the eye sockets, which are been protected by skull, eyebrows, eyelashes, eyelids and also tears produced by the lacrimal uh, glands. Now, you know it has mainly three layers, outer sclera middle choroid and inner sensory membrane retina. Now, when you come for the retina has uh, photoreceptors, rods and uh, cones which will help in the real vision of the eye. Now, when you come for the retina, retina receives uh, different uh, colors and also different shades of gray in uh, dark also. Now, already I have now discussed that uh, different uh, sensory organs, uh, this especially the skin sensory receptors are being identified where uh, some more uh, senses like uh, sensitive to edges, boundaries of objects uh, and also responding to the light, shadow and motion has been reported recently. Now, children, now note these questions and try to uh, bring out the answers for them by discussing with your friends. So, please note down these questions in your notebook. Describe the structure of the human eye with a neat labeled diagram. Did you know children? Second one, if the sense organs are absent in our body, what happens? Draw the pathway of stimulus to response showing all the components. How do you appreciate the functioning of a eye? Ok children, ok you may be having facing this type of question, this is academic standard 6 type of question where we have to appreciate here. How do you appreciate here means saying uh, very good, excellent, yes, not like that. So, for this type of questions, how you have to answer is, in the first point, you have to describe the function of the eye here. As a, basing on the different marks also, we have to answer the question. If it is 4 mark answer or 2 mark answer or 1 mark answer. If it is 4 mark answer, then we have to completely write the functioning of the eye in detail in the uh, 8 to 10 points. Whereas, uh, if it is for two marks, uh, in uh, just uh, simply, we have to write in uh, one or two lines uh, and then in the second point, you have to say whether if this eye is absent, what happens? We have to face many problems, just one or two points and then this is the reason why we appreciate the functioning of uh, eye. This is how we can uh, write the uh, academic standard six questions related to this uh, appreciation. Children, I think uh, you have uh, enjoyed this class and learned the topics uh, perfectly and I hope uh, you utilize this in your uh, daily life uh, and uh, lead your life uh, very happily. Thank you.